climate change may literally blow up Russia. Now, Ron, how is that for a uh, Russia story? It's uh, it's different than the usual, man. Like different you said. than the usual Russia story, exactly. Now, uh, this did is promise according... that. <laughs> this is according to the uh, Think Progress blog, which is uh, uh, which says that Russian scientists have recently discovered some seven thousand underground methane bubbles in Siberia that could explode at any time. Explode? I'm not kidding. Now, these uh, bubbles are filled with methane. And they have a term for them. Now, they haven't exactly been seen before. This is not really a new phenomenon, but this is something that we've just kind of discovered. Like, it was there, but we just figured it out. And it's, again, one of the effects of climate change. Now, these are called alternative pingos. Now, that sounds like something Donald Trump would try to ban from the country. <laughs> but, okay, so what... Well, first, to understand what an alternative pingo is... You have to understand what a pingo is. Uh, it's essentially an ice bubble covered by earth, soil, right? So it's underground. You don't see it. Now, alternative pingos are the same kind of thing, but it's ice covered, or I'm sorry, earth covered pockets of frozen methane and CO2 instead of water ice. And sometimes there's natural gas in these as well. Now, most of Siberia, as you might or might not know, it's covered with permafrost, which permafrost has you know traps uh, a lot of gases including carbon dioxide and methane and it turns out there's this weird thing where when the planet warms it makes things melt and when these melt when the when the permafrost melts in certain areas well it creates these time bombs that are under the surface of the earth now uh, this is a Russian Academy science spokesperson who said the appearance of these at such high latitudes is most likely linked to thawing permafrost, uh, which is in turn linked to an overall rise in temperature in the north of Eurasia during the last several decades. Now, this has got a lot of scientists fairly concerned for several reasons. First, methane traps about as 86 times as much heat as CO2 over a 20-year period. So it's a very potent uh, greenhouse gas. Now, thawing permafrost, of course, releases both CO2 and methane. Uh, it, if, as it appears, a lot of methane is generated from this, then, you know, it, you get the melting permafrost, you get more methane in the air, well, you're going to have even more warming, stuff that scientists previously didn't even account for. So the projections of global warming or climate change are going to be worse. Now, second, a recent study found global warming will defrost much more permafrost than we actually thought. That's a double whammy. Third, permafrost has already been warming at an alarming rate. In general, the Arctic warms twice as fast as the planet as a whole. So let me give you an example. Last summer saw an abnormally warm summer in 2016 on the Yamal Peninsula of Siberia, where many of these bubbles have been found. Coincidence? I think not. And in March, Siberia again saw stunning temperatures, according to NASA's latest monthly report. Globally, it was the second hottest March on record, losing out to only March of 2016. And, of course, I believe this March will probably lose out to March of 2018, on and on and on, as it gets warmer. <laughs> Parts of Siberia and the Arctic were as much as 12.1 degrees Celsius, or 22 degrees Fahrenheit, above the 1951 to 1980 average. That is a disaster. Now, if you don't give a shit about Russia, which, by the way, the methane isn't just going to stay over Russia. It, the atmosphere kind of surrounds all of us, Okay. But say you're an idiot who doesn't know anything, nor do you care about what happens uh, to Russia, and you're only worried about America, well, I've got some bad news for you on that. Vladimir E. Romanowski, a permafrost decay expert at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, told the Washington Post that the methane-filled alternative pingos are definitely related to warming and could appear in Canada or Alaska, so in North America. Quote, it is just a matter of time when some of those craters appear in North America as well. Several, uh, uh, Romanovsky said, already several pingos have emerged right under the Alaskan pipeline. The scientist said, if one of those bulges turned out to be an alternative pingo, that's not good news either. And why is that not good news, Ron? Because they fucking explode. That's why. Oh, snap. Yeah, see, 
The Washington Post explains, when researchers drill straight down into a traditional pingo, they hit the kernel of ice at the center. Coming in from the sides, the drillers might discover water close to the freezing point or possibly super cooled. But what if someone were to take a drill to an alternative pingo? It's almost like, I don't know. I, uh, you know what? I was going to make an alternative right joke. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid that, actually. <laughs> uh, maybe you can later on. Uh, now, if somebody were to take a drill to an alternative pingo, that is not good news, as Romanovsky put it. The gas within the hill is not only under immense pressure, but it happens to be quite flammable. Now, some of these humps are 50 to 100 year, uh, yards across, up to a tenth of the size of a classical pingo. Now, Romanovsky said it was unknown exactly how the alternative pingos were formed, but he has an idea. In place of an ice kernel, alternative pingos may contain methane hydrate, the milky solid that forms when water mixes with natural gas and freezes. So these are basically filled with, some of these are filled with natural gas. So yeah, that's going to explode. Not good. Wow. And when they explode, they leave a giant crater. Now, last year, social media went nuts over some of these giant Russian craters that we found. That essentially, what we thought came out of nowhere. Well, scientists think that since there wasn't a lot of uh, material that was ejected from this site in other craters, that it had to be one of these pingos. Since there wasn't a lot of land to basically spew out when they explode, it's more of like, okay, so there wasn't really a lot of land to begin with. It was this frozen ice you know, natural gas methane mixture, okay? In fact, in the bottom of one of these craters that they found, explored a year after it was formed, it had methane gas concentrations as high as 6%. At that uh, concentration, Romanovsky said, the air itself could be ignited. That's bad. That's a year after it was formed. Like, it's not under the ice anymore. It's been released. And yet there's still enough methane there to blow up the air. This is a disaster waiting. And imagine if one of these, Ron, ends up under a pipeline. Ooh. Even more of a disaster. So that's what climate change is doing. Good thing it's not real, man. Good thing it's a Ooh. good thing it's Ooh. a Chinese hoax, man. Good thing they just made that up. Or I'd, I'd be really worried, but uh, but good yeah. good science fiction story, Jeff. Boy, that's yeah. what if that was real? Shwoo. Oh. yeah, I know, I, right? Just just avoid Siberia, just to be just just in case. <laughs> no, this like if there's enough of this, I mean, you could see parts of Russia explode. Now, I'm sure that, you know, some Democrats are out there cheering it. Yeah, explode Russia. <laughs> That's what we want to yeah, do anyway, sadly, right? Yeah, sadly, yeah, you're right. They're, they're doing their best McCarthy impressions and are beating the drum for World War III because they're progressive. Let's not. Let's not. Let's avoid that. Let's avoid that. It's, I agree. I'd rather not make countries explode, and I'd rather not have make the conditions through our inaction of climate change to make countries explode on their own. Because, again, what happens there, all that methane gets released up in the atmosphere. Well, that's going to make it much more difficult for us, especially with how concentrated that greenhouse gas is. This is, this is not a good situation. We are not winning in this case. Well, what's the time frame on all this? That I'm not sure. I mean, we've already okay. seen them pop up. So they're, they're not but, clear on that yet? Uh, not that I've read. But we're already okay. seeing these pop up. And they seem to be happening more frequently in Russia that we're seeing these these pingos and alternative pingos pop up. And we're right now we're just we're just scratching the surface of, of what's going on. And they're not exactly 100 percent sure on how they form um, and, and all the different factors that that lead up into creating this. So but they're thinking that climate change is the major factor with all the melting of the permafrost. Mm hmm. So. Well, I think we better go ahead and ping go something about climate change. Sorry, I I, did, I tried to make a pun. Yeah. I failed miserably. No, no, uh, ping go, ping go, do something or something. I don't ping know. Ping go, do something about climate change. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Don't 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 be an alternative pingo. That's right. Don't be Those a member of the phonies. alt pingo. <laughs> Sad. 
sad. But no, I mean, uh, the, you know, to, to go abroad with it, I mean, the fact that we still have climate change deniers, which at least is a term that's embraced now. Before, people would Thank say, goodness. oh, well, I don't, I don't believe in climate. That's not something you can or can't believe in. And I've went on that spiel before. I'm not going to do it uh, again. But you can't believe or not believe in something that is evidence-based and the evidence is there. That, that's not how the concept of belief works. You either accept climate change or you just deny that it's there. So, but it's amazing that we still have climate change deniers as elected officials. That, that, that's amazing to me. Yeah, well, you know, uh, who's the guy that had the snowball? Can't think of his name for some oh, reason. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. All right. I, I know what you're talking me. about, but yeah, I, I don't remember. D just bringing a snowball. Yeah, well, I got, look, it was cold outside. It was cold yesterday. I think, I think what it has to do with, um, you know, and I kind of saw an interesting uh, tweet from, well, it's it's it was a tweet, but it was actually of a quote of uh, somebody who was an astronaut who said, hey, uh, you know, I, I want to drag some of these politicians out to the moon, right, and have them look at Earth. Because what they're doing, what they're, what, you know, the things that they talk about, their disagreements are so incredibly petty that we would just want to drag them out here and say, look at this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this, is, this is what you're doing. This is what, like, you need to think of the big picture and think of what's, well, you know, what's really important. You want to save that. Uh, and and how much is your you know the, your your donations from the fossil fuel industry worth? Is it worth destroying that? Look at that, you son of a bitch! Is this that's what it made me think of. Mm -hmm. and, and sadly, all they think about is short term, and mainly short term profit. How they're going to profit off this, um, you know, all fossil fuels, but. In the end, look, we're not going to, as a species, profit from continued use of fossil fuels. We're just, I mean, we're destroying ourselves at the expense of extreme capitalism. And that is sad. Well, we're killing ourselves over fake money. Yeah. So if you want to put a big hashtag sad on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, might I'm as well. Right there. Hashtag sad. Yeah. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.